All right, let's take a nighttime drive in the 72 Marquis. One of the best things about these old cars. Fire it up. I love the air hissing sound when you turn the headlights on here. Because the headlights are vacuum activated. Isn't that cool, that beautiful blue-green light? These cars are just so much fun to drive at night. I don't know why they don't have that blue-green light anymore. It's very soothing. And here's the high beam indicator. See, it's that red marking under the 60 mile per hour mark. the turn signal too. All these noises and sights and sounds of these old cars are just bring back so many memories. I'm sure it does for the viewers too. And these Mercury's are just so well made from this era. These are some of my favorite, I'll call them budget collectibles because you really don't pay much for them. They're still pretty cheap. They are hard to find. But when you find them, you really have just found a treasure, especially if you get a low mileage one. This one is 42-ish thousand miles on it. When I bought it, it had something in the mid thirties, I wanna say, but I've owned it for about eight years and you just can't stop driving it. It drives so well. And of course I don't drive it in inclement weather days. And here we are out on the main road. This car does have an added dual exhaust to it when I bought it. And they're somewhat louder than stock, but it's still very pleasant. Nothing to complain about. I guess the only thing to complain about is I need to clean my windshield. I love looking out over those fender peaks. There was one time when I got this car way back when, and I got caught in an early snowstorm. There wasn't any salt on the roads, thankfully. It was kind of funny, the egg crate grill trapped all the snow, and the front end of the car looked pretty humorous. Everybody now drives so quickly in whatever vehicle they have because they all are 400 horsepower. And this has plenty of torque, plenty of horsepower to get up and go. But you just drive with such a relaxed temperament in one of these vehicles. Almost as if there's not a care in the world. You just enjoy what's going on. Of course, you gotta look out for everybody else because they're not doing the same. And they're going 100 miles an hour on the expressway while you're in the right lane trying to run you off the road. This car will, if I wanted, I bet top speed is about 120. I've had it up past 100 miles an hour and it does just fine. It's got plenty of power if you want to go that fast, but there's no sense to go that fast. That's not the purpose of one of these vehicles. purpose is just to enjoy yourself, sit back, relax. I feel like we need some more of that these days. Everything's so hectic. You just need to unwind. Driving should be about that, not about flying around every single corner. I don't know about everybody else, but for me, that's, I don't know, fun for every once in a while. But Especially with the roads here in the Midwest, I'm looking for something that soaks up the bumps, not something that accentuates them. And this is not a great road, but you hear none of the impact harshness. These body on frame cars just gave you a whole other level of isolation that the unibody vehicles really don't do. 
and even the Chryslers of the time weren't nearly as good. I will say my Imperial is relatively good, my 72 Imperial, but it's a unibody car. And it is noisier than the Fords and GMs of the period, although not so much. Anything outside of the Imperial though, in the Chrysler stable, I would say, is indeed noisier than the GMs and Fords, almost annoyingly so. I have a 72 New Yorker, which is not a cheap car. It's about the same base price as an Olds 98 during the time period, and it's way noisier than an Olds 98. It's got a great 440 and 727 transmission, but I would not have been happy with the noise levels on the inside of that Chrysler if I had bought the car new. And the interior materials aren't all that great on the New Yorker. On the Imperial, they're a step up. But if you're looking for an affordable classic, these early 70s Fords are kind of unloved still. I highly recommend getting one that's from 1974 before. Once you hit 75, Ford started trying to take the weight out of the cars and they were having some financial troubles. And while the build quality is good, the sound deadening isn't as high and you can see the base vehicle curb weights really come down pretty fast during that time period. So you really want something from the 71 to 74 time frame. You're not gonna pay much money. It'll be well built. It'll have good power, especially if you get a 400, a 429, or a 460. Can't really recommend a 351 of these. I've had some 351 power cars, and they're okay, but especially if you get a 75 Ford with a 351, it's a total slug. I had one, and the car was nice, but I had to richen up the jets and the carburetor because it was jetted so lean. This is a terrible road, by the way. I'm trying to avoid some of the bumps, but you can't even hear it. In any case, I highly advise getting an earlier 70s Ford. You're just going to be so much more pleased. Hope you enjoyed this nighttime drive. One last look at the gauges as we close it out here. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, happy motoring and take care. Be sure to try to find one of these vehicles if you're looking for an affordable classic.